This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm John Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to scripture, he is buried, and he rose again the third day, According to the scripture, spirit of the Lord's upon me. He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recover the sight to the blind, set at liberty, them that are bruised. Thank God. Amen. The word is not thee, even in your heart and your mouth. There's a word of faith, which I preach. You can pass with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes it, the Jew first and also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just to live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone <clears throat> bearing us on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, and other devices. Kathy Davidson, co-host on the left. Good morning, and how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Brian Bonner. Because on my right, how are you, sir? Doing well. Good. I really don't want to say this, but I've got to, because I don't want to forget. Is Neil Dodge here? No. Has he been here? No. Does anybody know about anything about him? Guess not. Okay. Well, I'll ask one more question. Is he cashing his checks? We can look into it and let you know. What? Paul said he will look into it and let you know. Thank you. That's the only way I know checking on him. Amen. Thank you. All right, what are we going to do, say? We sure can. What, You're the boss. What did I told you we'd do? You didn't tell me what we were going to do. Then let's say. <laughs> This I know that I would please with me because of fun. I hate it and the God's not shall and triumph over me. By this I know that I would please with me. Yeah. 
now is Kathy D. She and is doing well. You're about to find out. <laughs> Open your mouth wide and the Lord will fill it. Amen. I'm going to speak today and I have a couple testimonies. But first, I want us to consider. I want you to just consider. And sometime when you're laying in bed, instead of thinking about all your problems, I want you to consider this. I want you to consider the moment that God raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. I want you to consider the power <coughs> that it took Amen. to raise him. Hallelujah. I want you to consider where Jesus was. Yes. Jesus was in hell. He was in hell. And he was in hell as a sinner. Do you understand that? If you look at Psalm 88, it says, Jesus said uh, in the Psalms, it says, my soul is full of troubles. Amen. That word is evil. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Amen. That word is evil. My soul is full of evil. Amen. And he is in the lowest pit in hell. He's at the very bottom. The very bottom. The world's worst sinner is now in hell. His body is laying in a grave. And that body, if you will read Isaiah 53, it says, Surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. Amen. So that body in the grave has every sickness and every disease ever on it. On it. That is a sick, dead body lying in the grave. Sick. <laughs> Not only sick, it's in pieces. Amen. Thank it's you, in pieces. Thank you. It said that every bone was dislocated. Well, they didn't go all back together when they took him down off the cross. Can you imagine having to wrap that up? Yeah. Every bone dislocated. So we got a sick, diseased body in pieces in the grave. Or in the grave. Great. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, not only that. But the man died poor. Amen. He's got nothing. I mean, he didn't have even a grave to lay him in. Thank you, they took all his clothes. They took all his, all his ownings. They took everything. So the man is totally in poverty. Yeah. And his soul is dead. His spirit is dead. His spirit's dead. He died two deaths. He died a physical death. He died a spiritual death. He is in hell as the world's worst sinner and his soul. Spirit is dead. Now, think about what God had to do. What God had to do to get him out of the grave. The first thing he had to do was he had to forgive every sin known to mankind. Every sin. He, he who knew no sin became sin. Amen. Didn't become part sin. Didn't become a little bit of sin. Became sin. So he had to forgive every sin to get him out of hell. He had to justify him. Oh, I love how Paul speaks. He says, justified in the spirit. Hallelujah. Paul knew what it took to get that Amen. man out of hell. Amen. He was justified in the spirit. Amen. That all had to be taken away from him. Amen. It had to be taken out of him. He had to be justified. And then all those sicknesses and diseases and poverty on that body had to be healed. Had to be. Jesus wasn't going to limp coming out of the grave. That's right. He wasn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. This is the power of God. Come on. Amen. This Amen. is the power of God. Hallelujah. Took every sickness, every disease, <clears throat> took a broken body, put it back together and the man took a breath and opened his eyes. Hallelujah. Not only that, but he had a whole bunch of people with him. God raised from the dead at the same time. And you know what? Those people's bodies were corrupted. Yes. Those people's bodies were corrupted. We don't know how corrupted they were, but they weren't lying around waiting for God to come. Jesus had to put those bodies back. I mean, the Father had to put those bodies back together also at the same time. Some of them probably were nothing but dust. And we don't think he can get us out of here. He put those bodies back together. 
Amen. He put them back alive. He put their spirits back in them. He put their souls back in them. And they walked out of the grave and walked into Jerusalem. This is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now, why could the father do that? Why could he show his power on Jesus? Why could he? Because he gave Jesus a commandment and Jesus was going to fulfill it. He gave Jesus a commandment and Jesus was going to fulfill it. You know, if the father hadn't given him that commandment, Jesus would still be there. He said, the Father's given me a commandment to lay down my life and to pick it up again. How was he going to pick it up again? By faith. That was a man God gave that commandment to. Do you understand that? That was a man God said, pick up your life. How was he going to do it? He was going to have to do it by faith. He had no other power but faith. Amen. He laid all his power down when he came to the earth. So when the father, I want you to understand this. I want you to consider this. The commandment God gave to Jesus to lay down his life and pick it up again. He gave it to a man. Hallelujah. A man. Amen. And a man believed what the father said and he raised from the dead. The father had to go get him. Why did he have to go get him? Because Jesus had the faith he was. Amen. Jesus held the commandment God gave him, and God had to go get him. He had no choice. Do you know that if God has given you a commandment, he gave you the faith to perform it? Hallelujah. If God gave you a commandment, He gave you the faith to perform it. Now, I want you to consider this. When God raised Jesus from the dead, Jesus had every devil on him. He had every spirit on him. He had insanity on him. That's a devil. Oh, yeah. He had, he was deaf. That's a spirit. Amen. He had, he was blind. That's a spirit. Jesus had all those spirits on him and still. Still, God had to get them all off of him. Turn with me to Colossians 2. And I'm going to read verse 15. This is Jesus coming out of the grave. How did he come out? He came out by faith. He came out by faith. He didn't come out beating up the devil on the way. He didn't climb up the rocks one by one. He came out by faith, and by faith, the Father went and got him out. It says, okay, it says, having spoiled principalities, not just that little spirit of fear that runs around on the floor. It says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, how did he spoil him? He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And if you look in the NIV, it says, by the cross. He triumphed over them. And you know what that means? It means to disarm. Disarm them. Disarm the devil. He wasn't going to be able to get out of death until he overcame that spirit of death. So he had to overcome death. He had to overcome hell. He overcame all of that, and he did it by faith. By faith. Amen. Now, turn with me to Ephesians 1. Thank God. You who don't think God can even get you a job. All right. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Ephesians 1, 18. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What's part of that inheritance? Next verse. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? Who believed. Amen. How did Jesus work that power? He believed. Amen. He believed. He believed. That's why he worshiped God while he was in hell. He believed. He was a man. That was the only thing he could do was believe. Amen. There Amen. was nothing else he could do. He had no strength. He had no body. He had no, he had nothing. He had no power. He had none. 
He had to believe. Hallelujah. All right. He says, with the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And not only that, but set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. How did Jesus get there? He believed. Yes. He believed. He yeah. believed what God had told him. Hallelujah. You know, when I was in the sign business, God put me in the sign business. I knew God put me in the sign business. I knew it was God's will that I go there. Why? Because he said, when I said I need a job, God said, do signs. I had never done it before. I was clueless. But God led me step by step how to do, how to work in the sign business. Now, I'm a woman in the sign business. Now, women, there aren't very many women in the sign business at all, especially owners. <clears throat> Because of what you got to deal with. And I remember when, when the economy got bad, and I can't remember what the years these were, but it had to be before 2003. The economy started getting bad, and Frisco was having business after business closed down. And you know what? I had a commandment from God. He told me to run that sign business. You know what? There ain't going to be no down economy when God tells you what to do. Amen. If you consider the economy when you are in the will of God and he's given you a job, you're crazy. <laughs> you're also full of unbelief. Amen. My God made the economy. And I remember when all these businesses were, were, were going down, they'd call me and they'd say, oh, Kathy, it's so bad. It's just so bad. You know, all of us, I mean, there's just no work out there. And, and I'm here, you know, I got, I got work. You know what I, I would tell some of my people? I'd say, you know uh, all these businesses are closing down. And they said, well, are you suffering? I said, no, I'm the one making all the going out of business signs. <laughs> do you ever think God knew how to take care of me? One of the jobs that I had to do, and this came up during prayer, and I just started laughing. I hadn't thought about this in a while. Um, one, of the, one of the jobs or one of the businesses that grew in that bad time was the, the business of, um, what do they call that? Uh, uh, putting auctions. Big businesses having auctions to sell off all their equipment because they're going under. Because they're going under. So this auction company came into town and they moved about two blocks away from me. And they called me up to do a banner for them for, uh, for, for an auction shot. Now, when they did a banner, they did the big, big warehouse, big businesses. I mean, the, the, you know, the big major trucks, the whole bit. I mean, so they were auctioning off all this equipment, all these buildings, all that kind of stuff. They moved two blocks away from me. I knew it was God. Kathy needed some work. I also had to deal with two people in there, the auctioneer and the auctioneer's father. Now, the father kind of set up all the business, the auctioneer, he, he you know, they, they ran. Anyway, they were both two hard people to deal with. They were hard to deal with. I knew why they were in the auction business. They didn't give a rip about anybody. And they came in and they would say, okay, we need this, 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 and this. And I would say, okay, you need to pay this, 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 and this. And they always wanted their signs the next day. And it wasn't a little sign. It would be a 12 by, uh, was it 12 foot by six foot banner. And it had all this copy on it. I mean, you, it was, I knew when they would come in and order, we were going to be up late at night getting this stuff done. And, and, and I dealt with them. But you know what? It was money. You know why? Because they needed it the next day. And I had to work on that. You know what that meant? Up charge. Yeah. Up charge. 50% up charge. And if they wanted it in three hours, 100% up charge. Amen. And, and they would give me such trouble. I would say, okay, I need this, this thing. You know, I need you to look at this before I make it. Because, you know, we don't have time for mistakes. And they, they, they wouldn't come. They wouldn't come. One day, finally, God, I finally realized what God was telling me to do. Kathy, rule in this situation. Amen. Rule. And you know what? My, at first, I thought, well, then maybe they'll fire me. And then you know what? After a while, you don't care. You're going to obey God. I called and I got the, the auctioneer's father, who was a fun to deal with. And I finally said, look, you get your mm -mm down here and okay this or you're not going to have your sign when you want it. Five minutes later, he come bounding through the door. This, this man that was just hard. And he said, oh, honey. I never had a woman talk to me like that. I said, good, get over here. You know, I 
never had another issue with them. They were so nice to me. And you know what? They, after they sold all the big businesses in town, they went on to another state. Why? Because I didn't need them anymore. Yeah. I didn't need them anymore. If God, you have to know what the will of God is for your life. Amen. You have to know that where you are is the will of God. Amen. And once you know that, yes. then there is no Nothing less than prosperity. There Amen. is nothing less than what God has Amen. promised you, your inheritance. Do you understand that? Amen. If he has given you a commandment, Amen. then he has given you the faith to complete it. Amen. No excuses. Amen. Amen. Oh, me? <laughs> you know, I think you should know and understand that the Lord has been talking to me while he's listening to you. He can do that. Oh, yes. He's multitasking. Well, he, that's what he's doing, talking to me. Amen. And, and you're talking, and I know he's listening to you. And he was reminding me about being here in Plano, helping me. Amen. Amen. Now you like that. Amen. Amen. And not only that, he reminded me that he told me something in 1970. Amen. You want to hear it? Amen. Amen. May. 1970, now start praying. A vine shows up. Reading John 15. Now you turn to John 15. Headed there already. And you read the first 10 verses, and I'm going to tell you what he told me in 19. 70. You ready? Yeah. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Thank you. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that he may bring forth more fruit. Thank you. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Oh, yeah. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Whoa. Amen. Amen. He told me that in 1970, I couldn't do anything without him. Amen. So I've been listening to him. Go ahead and read the 10th verse. Read the 10th. Uh, six. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. End of 10th verse. Now you know why you're here. Amen. Brian, you know why you're here. Oh, yeah. No, you know why you're here. Oh, yeah. Amen. I got reminded a while ago, I told you, long time ago, you couldn't do anything without me. Amen. So, was it a shock when he said, I'm coming to help you? Amen. And then he said, I'm in here in person. Oh, my. And finally, he said, Well, I am your brother. Did you know that changed my life? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Amen. 
or you are my brother. Did you know that didn't happen just a few months back? I know. So here he is helping me because I can't do it otherwise. Amen. And guess what? He created the whole world. Amen. Hallelujah. He created every bit of this. Amen. And sent me. Created you too. <laughs> then he broke the mold. Oh, yeah. There's no more of that. <laughs> he chose me. He sent me to the four corners of the earth. Amen. To deliver his word. Hallelujah. Without fear or despair. Amen. I'm glad he told me about those two. Amen. And so I was thinking, you know, I'm going to make it. Amen. I'm going to say, thank God, hallelujah. I'm going to say, hallelujah. And it won't be long till I'm going to say, thank you. And we're going to see the lame walk, Amen. the Amen. deaf hear, the dumb speak. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Lame walk. Dumb speak. Dumb hair. What's the other one? Blind see. Blind see. The blind. <laughs> what does that mean? I got to see before he gets here. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm happy? I'm happy enough to say, let's hear Terry, the Browns, and Paul Peters do Holy Highway. Hallelujah.
sat a little. You see, the Lord's here helping me overcome all the darkness, Amen. all the persecution. And that says, Isaiah 35, he's saving me from all of you. And when it gets me, where I can see, the blind's going to see, Amen. the dumb's going to speak, the blind's going to walk, the deaf's going to hear, and I'm going to watch. Amen. That's right. Mercy, grace, Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless. See you tomorrow. Amen. Thanks. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972 972- 578-8082 or write Doyle Davidson Post Office Box 861327 Plano, Texas 75086 That's Doyle Davidson Post Office Box 861327 Plano, Texas 75086 This program was paid for by Water of Life Church <laughs>